I remember going to see the last year. You probably went to see Disney on Ice. All right. And there was people. Um, there was a dude dressed as the. Um, oh, what's the candlestick name from Beauty and the Beast? Lumiere. Lumiere. Yeah. Like dressed as that, ice skating, and I was like, like that guy. Like if he goes, he's in. A, he can't stop himself. No, he's, he's done. Yeah. He's done. And then there was some guy dressed as Sebastian. Okay. Who, who busted out a cartwheel on ice wow. skates. As you do. And I was like, this is the most impressive thing I've ever seen in my life. Because I think last time I went to ice skating, I literally cried. Right. But couldn't do it. Tears. And like, there's a guy dressed as Sebastian from flipping, what was it? Little Mermaid. Uh, yeah. Doing a cartwheel in full costume on skates. How did that make your childhood self feel? Um, well, you would probably been really excited to see it, but the uh, the thirty nine thirty eight version of me was like, wow. <laughs> Respect to the dude in the Sebastian outfit. Yeah. That's not bad. That is yeah. not bad. Yeah. Well, that's a strong opening to the show. <laughs> yeah, you, I know you like to start on the cold openings, so it's going to be about bloody stage shows. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Welcome to the Conquistadors. Tonight, the Conquistadors tread carefully as they come together to decide who is the greatest women's wrestler in ten years' time. Stepping into the ring tonight, the Empress of Tomorrow, Ewan Taylor. Five feet of fury, Cameron Phillips. The huggable one, Phil Doyle. And Jordi Allen Milburn. Only tonight on The Conquistables. It'll be amazing, pal. Don't worry about it. Such good shit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my throat. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. You're too poorly for a full Vince at the moment, well, aren't you? I'm, I'm too poorly for the full Vince, yeah. I can't do the full Vince. Vince is too poorly for the full Vince. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Um, um, no, I'm just not having it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Um, this is, a po- this is a podcast, isn't it? Sorry, is this the so thing long. we do occasionally? Occasionally? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, a, yeah. This is this quarter's ask, podcast. I just wanted to ask a question. The last time we recorded was AEW a thing, but now I think I'm probably going to ask, the last time we recorded was TNA a thing? Because <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that fucking long ago. It was it August was. of last year. August. <laughs> what? Yes. So we've had, AEW has debuted on TV? Yep. I've already lost interest what? in it. <laughs> we'd, we'd, like um, to, we'd like to, not like anymore. Uh, we might be coming back around again, who knows. Uh, NWA I, I, Power I, is a thing? Yeah, NWA Power I watch a lot more of probably than uh, AEW. Same. I don't know if it's just because the episodes are a bit shorter That's, or because it's hmm. a bit... I find with AEW, right, at the, at the moment, WWE is telling a joke that then they feel the need to explain the punchline to me again and again. Yeah. AEW a- is telling a joke, but the setup is from when before I came into the room. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good, yeah. Wow. Because I'm just <laughs> like, who's they? Because I don't have like an in a massively in depth knowledge of independent wrestling. I'll admit that, right? Yeah. Wow. I mean, the whole Orange Cassidy thing's kind of new to me now. I know, and I had no idea who the hell he was. Okay. Uh, uh, but for that, but AEW seem to like really go in for these like little kind of like in jokes, and occasionally I'm just like I I don't kind of get this. Hmm. Mm. I suppose because you know a lot of it comes from the being the elite YouTube yeah. show, which is, was yeah. essentially built on that, wasn't it? And Basically, and I, yeah. The the best thing on any episode of Dynamite for me is always the ex WWE guys. So mm. your Jericho's, your Cody's. Yeah, and people like that who big boss Moxley, yeah, and Moxley who are yeah. used to that live TV environment from doing like Raw and SmackDown. Mm. They know what to do. Everyone else just seems a bit lost. Yeah, I don't think it's lost. I think it's just unfamiliar with the the sort of setting. They're used to wrestling in front of like a few hundred people, maybe a thousand people on a good day or a big show. But now they're wrestling in front of. 
tens of thousands of people sometimes a week, yeah. depending on where they are. And I think it's a familiar thing. And also, I think as well, it's still a very new thing. They're still trying to find their feet. You know, they've, yeah, they've tried things that failed. Isn't it? Yeah, they, they, they've tried things. I mean, the Nightmare Collective thing with uh, oh, that, that went away, thankfully, because, well, the fans didn't like didn't it. it. <laughs> but that's the thing. They're actually listening to the feedback and saying, right, they don't really like this. Let's sort of phase it out. Like, course Whereas correcting instead, as soon as they can. You would have it in WWE, like Baron Corbin, for the next six months <laughs> with the opening segment. Well, because WWE have got to fill in, like, what, about nine or ten hours a week as opposed uh, to two? I think yeah, it's ridiculous. eight hours of original it's programming a week. Three hours of Raw, no, two seven. Was NXT, two of SmackDown. But then add on main event. Then NXT UK, UK then, a, then, yeah, then a pay per view. Yep. So you're talking something that's going to be nearly 15 hours of original programming. How long was the Rumble? About four days? Oh, I don't even know. Um, uh, the the Cameron edit was about two and a half hours. <laughs> the, the still edit was, I'll just watch the Rumble and that's it. Yeah, which is pretty much like, I'll just watch the Rumbles and then Google which were the decent undercard matches and then watch those afterwards. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't even like see all the high seas to watch the Rumble this year. That's how little I've disconnected altogether. I've not watched a single WWE match in about... Come really two years? Have you? Yep. Wow. Mm, okay. I've I've completely given up on them. That's fair enough. Um, I can I, see why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I'm. I still pay my ten pound a month for the network because I like watching the old stuff. Yeah, and a lot yeah. of people will do that, and that's fine by me. I can I, if I can sit and go. I feel like watching fucking Taboo Tuesday two thousand five. Why would you and do then, yourself? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just plucking complete numbers. Um, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, that's cool. I can just watch it. Um, and I like watching Ride Along for some reason. That's my kind of guilty pleasure. <laughs> that's that's fair. It's not the it's not the worst program they have in the next It's not the worst program. It's got be. some absolute stinkers on there. I kind of dip in and out of the YouTube channel and just kind of pick up bits from, it, from that whenever I need to, like the odd uh, Five Five Fun House thing, because you know. I do dig that what 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 Bray Wyatt does with that character on some of the vignettes. Like one of them was like some kind of masterpiece of like uh, quite an in-depth critique of his career through the medium of puppets. Which I, how he got that through onto TV, I got no idea, but he did, and it's you know to, I respect him for that. Oh, there's a whole load of that. He's basically I, I like the fact that when they had the Rumble match with Daniel Bryan and the Fiend. Yeah. Although the match itself was, I'm not a big fan of strap matches because it basically just ends up being a whipin, a literal whipin match. Literally whipin, yeah. And it's just like, um, but I did like the fact that they referenced the 2014 Rumble when yes. like oh, yeah. Daniel Bryan escaped the Wyatt family and they kind of let that was the, the Fiend never forgets. Yeah. I kind of think so. The Fiend is basically Bray Wyatt's alter ego going back over Bray Wyatt's. Korea, yeah, and taking names from that, yeah. See, that kind of story could be told a whole lot better when you don't have a geriatric old man at the wheel who <laughs> changes his mind on an hourly well, basis. The lucky part is, uh, uh, from what you can hear so far at the minute, he's apparently spending less and less time with the WWE. That is um, uh, XFL. Uh, now, there's isn't apparently it? been XFL. about the apparently with the XFL. Yeah, there's apparently been about yeah. There's apparently been about three episodes of Raw in the last two months or so where he's not even been there. I'm sure he's still having his input, but him not being at the grill position will help. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I watched um, NXT TakeOver Portland last night, and I'm so glad Vince doesn't touch those. (laughs) Yet. (laughs) Because, yet, but that, because the Portland one, it was bloody, how come, like, you know, you get, to the last few takeovers and on Twitter or whatever afterwards, it's always people going, that was probably the best takeover. For about the last three, you've had people say that. The genuine consensus seems to be, that's going to be the best takeover. I have a, a criticism though. Why are we going back to Gargano Champa for the 80,000th time? That's what I was about to say. The, the only kind of tarnish on it is the fact that, oh, brilliant, we're going to get Gargano versus Champa. I guess because they wanted to end that feud yeah. properly because you know, we didn't it have a proper ended ender, did it? properly. It went on and, on and on and on for about six months until they were practically putting bloody um, like concrete slabs through each other's eyes. <laughs> 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 wow. 
that's kind of it's it, kind of how I felt after like match. Yeah, three. it got like, so it, the, the the violence for like you know that the street fight they had and it uh-huh. all just seemed to get more and more ridiculous. It was violence for violence sake with no actual storytelling. And even even when they did the whole DIY thing, the, the reunion a couple of months ago, I was like, this is too conveniently. It's too like. Johnny Gargano forgetting that he threatened <laughs> Tommaso Ciampa threatened his wife. Yeah, it's just, just goes hey, you know. But so this is when, as soon as he appeared, I was like, nah, he's not gonna be, nah. Yeah, you just knew already. And predictability is good in wrestling, but predictability where you're just like, oh, for God's sake, not again. That's not what you want. No, the only difference is that it's the reversal of the the roles now. That yeah, Gargano the roles are different. Here. Yeah, and Ciampa would be the face. But, but I just Champa was such a good heel, yeah, that it's kind of impossible for him to, you know what I mean? It's it, it's not like they're short of talent in NXT. No, I know what you mean. It's it's they not can, like they could elevate somebody tomorrow and it'd be fine. Or they can put someone who's doing nothing on Raw and SmackDown back well, into NXT. Hmm. Like Finn Balor in the last six months is worth ten times as much or, as he was. At SummerSlam last year, yeah, he's, like the, he's got that Prince character. He's actually like a defined character now, not yeah, just exactly. like some guys who basically cosplays as a demon. Yeah, I, I, there's been no mention of the demon Finn Balor at all. Yeah, but he's still he, he's not poorer because of it. No, no he's actually better because he doesn't have he's that saddling on there. Yes, and it's just uh, and that all that's taken is for him to go back. You know, you you, you kind of have to stop yourself saying back down to NXT. Yeah, hmm. that's... It's, that's it's, not really the case now. No, it's it's more just a different show. But yeah. As well, we don't know the, was it Charlotte Flair and Ray Ripley? Yep. Which is probably the most refreshing thing they could have done with a Charlotte Flair Rumble win. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I read that and I just thought, for fuck's sake, why? Why Charlotte Flair? Well, the, the Rumble always boils down. The last few years, the last two have always boiled down to interesting and new safe. choice that would be quite something cool or safe boring choice that they know they're going to get numbers out of yeah mm-hmm. and when them well like and the women's one boiled down to Shayna Baszler and Charlotte and Shayna would have been the interesting and new in, you know winner that could have led to somewhere quite cool mm-hmm. and Charlotte was the oh god not again boring winner yeah, and they went with the boring one. They went with boring because I think they're afraid to let. I don't know if they're afraid to elevate Shayna Baszler right now because she is relatively new to the top brand, so to speak. But Shayna Baszler on top would be amazing. And then, if by some matter of means Ronda Rousey finds her way back to the WWE, you've got a built-in feud right there. Yeah, well, that would have been amazing. It would be great. But it's the same with like the the men's rumble boiled down the same thing. The you know Roman Reigns boring choice, yep. but been there before. You know they know they're going to be the safe with the numbers at WrestleMania though. And then the interesting choice of Drew McIntyre, and thank fuck they went for Drew. <laughs> Amazingly, they went for the interesting choice because when I woke up <laughs> the following morning and read that, I thought, huh. It was kind of telegraphed halfway through when the first half of that rumble was basically Brock Lesnar eliminating everyone as they stepped stepped in the ring. Yeah, yeah, that was a and bizarre experience. It got like the, it was interesting, then boring, and then it would flip back around and interesting yeah. again. It was so I strange. Admit, you I was getting doing. really, I was getting really pissed off with it because I was like, "Is this going to be the whole rumble?" Because I hate the rumble when it just bases itself on one person. Yeah, mm. like the '99 Royal Rumble when it was all about Austin and uh, Vince. That was boring because it's just everyone else was just a bystander. Um, this was kind of boiling down to the same thing. It was just Brock, and that was it. And I'm yeah. bored of Brock. Um, and I, then the more you think about it, the more you think either they're going to go the whole way, and then Brock's just going to eliminate 29 other folk one by one, and no one's going to touch him, or it's going to be won by whoever eliminates Brock. Yeah. And blow it. Option B. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah cause like all that heat they kind of built around Brock being there, eliminating people. As soon as Drew put him out, it was like it just seemed to elevate him up massively. Which mm-hmm. it's like, oh my god, did they plan this? They... <laughs> well, I think they were obviously like testing the water to see the reaction of Drew eliminating yeah. Brock, yeah. and the fans popped for it. 
<laughs> oh, huge. So, well, especially in Scotland, I've seen a few clips from pay per view parties from and the bars just, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, there's going to be like massive. They'd be stupid not to have someone like reporting from Glasgow, you know, in the run up to WrestleMania. <laughs> that would be get dodgy some IT, at best, surely. Get some IT, well, Phil, well, Phil. Um, get BT Sports down there. Yeah. On a very good, yeah, on a very long, you know, no, uh, delay. App, whatever. But it's just going to be, you know, it, it's going to be amazing. And it's just in a similar kind of like. In a similar way to Kofi Kingston being like, you know, the first, you know, black American um, champion that his title reign was going to be last last year. Yeah. Then this is going to be, you know, the first British born um, WWE champion. You know, it's a similar, similar idea. Because be they, could, there's been rumours that them bring in, Summer, was it SummerSlam for the 30th anniversary? Yeah. Oh, that, something like that one of the major ones is the, the rumour that they're yeah. going to bring it over because they've realised that wait a minute everyone has the internet they can find yeah. out the results anyway well so yeah that was always the big excuse wasn't it the big excuse yep. was always like oh people would just find the results and no one in America would buy it it's like oh, yeah you'll go to feckin' Dubai or whatever oh, oh yeah because they'll give them literally like a hundred million dollars or whatever yeah they'll give you a, you know, a hundred million squidding these to do whatever the did that yeah. happen since our last show? All those shenanigans. No, that's uh, what do you mean. Oh, you mean the whole we didn't they didn't get uh, out of Saudi Arabia <laughs> stuck on the stuck on the airport yeah, because no, that Vince was, is still yeah, negotiating November. the fee. Uh, as yeah. Callus is just going to say for me to say yes, they deserve that because <laughs> the fact they're taking the money in the first place is yeah. just a major yeah. no no for me. The only good thing about those shows is that they're on like a decent time in the evening over here. <laughs> but the shows are trash. Yeah, they are they're absolute just, trash. They really are awful. <laughs> The Goldberg it's, Undertaker one being the particular highlight. Well, that was more of a car wreck than anything else. Well, I think it's what is it? Goldberg got himself concussed about yeah. three and seconds. Yeah, downhill from that <laughs> somehow. And there was just like downhill from which is it's it's one of them. It's an unfortunate thing, but that's it. it is, but it's yeah. like it's like when the whole Fiend and Goldberg thing had that video clip. You know, the the, the interview the other day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was hmm. like, oh, brilliant! They're going to have Goldberg versus the Fiend at WrestleMania. No, it's for Super Showdown in Rehab. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Get because the crowd in Radia are really going to give two flying fox. So It'll be a big red light bulb for that stadium. Oh, God. Yeah. Sacrifice somebody or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, when they, they, the thing was there, like, he carried, he still carried a disembodied head to the ring, even though that's what happened to that journalist. Oh, that's yeah. a good point, actually. Yeah, it's like, what, you know, the, exactly what, was beheaded, uh, wasn't he? Kishogi, yeah. 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 Was, and then the yeah, was Bray Wyatt literally carrying his own head to the ring. like, guys... <laughs> Guys. When, you, when you've got 10 people going to visit him with bone saws, um, generally not good. That's, that's not going to be a quiet chat. I'm actually no. amazed they never named the, the cup they have for the Battle Royal, the Khashoggi Cup, but that's maybe just me. <laughs> They're not that senseless, are they? No. Well, mm. they've got a little bit more to it than that, maybe. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway. The Khashoggi World Cup, there you go. <laughs> but anyway, even when they're in. Uh, um, Rihad or Saudi Arabia, whatever they're going to be, then it's um, they're not going to have that much women's wrestling there. <laughs> One match. Here we well, go. I know there's a segue coming. Let's, let's carry on. Coming, yeah. yeah. Because this episode is uh, the women's wrestling roundtable one, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, so we're probably going to have more. To- well, we haven't. We've been going about twenty minutes so far and haven't mentioned anything. Well, a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> we're probably going to give more spotlight to women's wrestling in this podcast than they ever are going to be in those shows. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's both. Well, yeah, we're definitely showing more skin than they will be. Yeah. Apart from uh, Alan, who's a raging misogynist, and would rather play darts than talk about women. You <laughs> <laughs> literally couldn't be doing anything like more kind of generic male, could he, than being in a pub playing darts? No, and I've just realised I've left my phone on charge in my bedroom, and I don't know if he's left a prepared statement or not. <laughs> well, I'll give him a prepared statement. My name is Jordi Al. I like darts. Uh, go Tories. <laughs> there you go. It's what almost like he's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, just to um, um, confirm the theme of the podcast because it's not. Yes. It's the we were going to do the greatest women's wrestler, which. As bad as it fat sounds, with four three men talking on the podcast, we found hard to do. Not because they're not good wrestlers out there, but because not many of them have been given the chance to have a good career to warrant being called a, the greatest wrestler. That was our thinking, wasn't it? 
Yes. Yeah, well, uh, you're either stuck between going to the past where the um, the, the kind of oh wait a minute, hold on. Uh oh. Uh oh. We've got uh, we we oh there's a mill burn on the loose. Oh boy. <laughs> oh shit! I've just Don't slagged it away. Off. Hold on. Hold on. Can I invite? Hold on. A wild animal appears. It's not very effective. <laughs> well, we've heard that one once. Ooh, careful, careful. Hold on, I'm trying to add him to the, this call. I'm adding him. I'm adding him. Let's keep I'm calling him. He tried to call me, and it was like, "Oh, you, you, this will put your call on hold." Oh, is he in? Hello, hello, hey! hey. What, happened to, what happened to your darts? Oh, uh, they didn't want to play. We were just getting started about explaining why this episode wasn't the originally planned um, greatest women's wrestler. Okay. Because, <laughs> as Phil was explaining, um, it either descends into two categories. Either they're relatively new and have had some pretty decent matches but are still on the go and so therefore haven't really had their whole career. Or they are in the past of like WWE and WCW when they were pretty much there for either tits or ass. Yeah. Okay. And they were even like you know you get your Hall of Famers like Trish Stratus who still had her fair share of like fantasy pillow fights in her day. Well, she oh. was awful at the start. People, you know, she was terrible when she first debuted. Well, they Trish. Were terrible. Al. Yeah. <laughs> Trish. Yeah. Trish yeah. was quite spectacularly bloody awful. You're right. Yeah. And then yeah. and then they put the belt on her in 2001 at the Survivor Series, which was a bit too soon, I think. But she picked up quite a lot after that. Yeah. yeah. So we decided to kind of. Uh, polish off our crystal balls and figure out who's going to be the greatest women's wrestler in 10 years time yes that was the slight change of plan yes so I think uh, we all picked one I think so well, yeah yeah, I don't think I don't think mine will win. Um, <laughs> and before me, young. If it's the bushwhackers, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be look from the bushwhackers in a dress. <laughs> they must have done that at least once. They must have t- tried to do that in a match. <laughs> Probably right. must have done. <laughs> it must have done. Surely, <laughs> pretend to be Miss Elizabeth or something. You demanded more opportunities for the women in WWE. And you started a hashtag called Give Divas a Chance that trended worldwide for three days, igniting a revolution across our industry and opening doors for women that some of them had only dreamed of. Because of all of you, 30-second matches became main events. And because of all of you, Divas became the superstars they were born to be. So, when thinking about this, I wanted to kind of think, right, who's sort of hot at the moment, but not not at the level of, like, greatest of all time, but who could possibly get there? And then I kind of thought, I went with somebody who's still fairly young on their career. It's actually got a reasonable amount of success in the moment. And I went for the current NXT Women's Champion and the former Rhea Ripley. Is 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 is
Now, yeah. I didn't realise she was only 23. No way. I knew she was young, but I didn't I realise she was 23. Didn't think she was that young. That seems yeah. very, very young. And she basically started a career in Australia, which mm-hmm. back in 2013 wasn't exactly the hotbed of wrestling that it kind of is now. Mm-hmm. With um, their links, well, Mem- uh, Memphis City Wrestling, Jesus, no. Melbourne City Wrestling have got a link with New Japan now. Hey, didn't your boy Will Osprey go down there for a little bit? He did, yes. Yep. He went down there. And basically she was there for four years and then got signed to do the first May Young Classic. And that was when she became Rhea Ripley. And she got to think the second round of the first one. Uh, then she debuted on NXT. Um, I think it was NXT Takeover. She was in a Battle Royal, I think, if I remember correctly, for the uh, Vacant Women's Championship at Takeover War Games. Oh, and it was that when um, Asuka dropped yep, that's it. moved up. Yes, yep, when she moved up. Uh, but then over the last maybe a few months after her run in NXT UK, she's come back to the States with this new sort of gritty, hard-nosed, no-shit-taking persona. And the little I've seen of her work, because obviously I'm not watching WWE regularly, I think she's fantastic. I think her attitude's great. The whole thing with Charlotte Flair right now, you've got two big-headed, hot-headed individuals are going to basically fight at Mania for the NXT Championship. Now, if you thought, said this five years ago, oh, Charlotte Flair will be wrestling for the NXT Championship at WrestleMania, you'd laugh. Mm. You'd be going, you're mad. There's no way she's going to win the Rumble and choose to go for the quote-unquote lesser belt. That would just be a stupid idea. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I, I just really like the fact that she's gone from the whole bubbly, happy character She's done a full 180, kind of like Bailey's done, hmm. but she's still got a lot of room to maneuver because she's still in NXT, that sort of creative bubble where you can have a play around with your character, you can play around with your persona, and I think give it a few years when she eventually goes to the main roster because she's going to go there at some point in time. She's practically there. Basically, yeah. But she's still technically an NXT star at the moment. Was she headline mania? Um... You mean eventually or just now? No, now, this year. Would it go on last, do you think? Or will, will, will it be some... I don't know. Maybe semi main event? I don't think it'll go on last. I don't think... It's not as I... big a match. I'm just putting it out there. Cause it no, no, no. That's sometimes. I think if it was for either the Raw or the SmackDown title, then it might. But if it was the NXT belt, then probably not. But then that goes back to the whole, aren't they trying to treat all the brands equally? So surely why couldn't? NXT headline WrestleMania, I see why it would be problematic. But yeah, I think, it, I think it depends how they position um, Charlotte Flair. I think maybe last year or the year before they might have done, but I think where she is now, I think she's definitely second to somebody else on the roster. That we'll be talking about later. Um, so that might be uh, something that goes on last, as opposed to this year. But I can certainly see, you know, down the line with the right feud and the right push behind her. There's no reason why she can't headline it because she no. She's got that connection with the audience, so exactly that's that's an important thing that a lot of people in WWE don't have, yeah, <laughs> at the moment. I just think more women in WWE have got a connection to the crowd than men have at the moment, yeah. And that's probably reason. great because it's only really like, um, maybe Drew, but only that's only just recently started, though. That's only just started since the Rumble, yeah. But uh, probably like Daniel Bryan, just because it's Daniel Bryan. Well, yeah, of course. But other than that, like of people who've been kind of, I guess, homegrown WWE, so you Roman Reigns and those kind of guys. Yeah. Yeah, they probably like not really. They've got a connection, but it's more just like on a fan level, not just like a deep emotional connection that some people have. So, I mean, did anyone see her sort of rant against Charlotte Flair on Twitter the other day? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was brilliant. Not so that, but it, had she actually been able to speak it as a promo? Well, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, she probably will. Uh, oh yeah, she's probably it. It. But it's 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 the point that she can easily fire back at um, Charlotte Flair is that yeah, she has got everything because she's called Flair. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's it. And Ray Ripley did not point. get that. And no. it's about yeah, it's a totally totally valid point. <laughs> yeah. um, is Charlotte heel in this match? I think she's been a heel since last year. Since she since like 
when she was in the triple main event with uh, Becky Lynch and Rousey, I think she was one of the, she was definitely on the heelish side. I mean, she wears a black leather jacket. Yeah. I mean, come on. The universal well, symbol the for a heel. The, the genuine consensus on that, sort of this time last year when Charlotte was getting put into the triple threat, was that she didn't really deserve to be there and didn't no. need to be there. Yeah. No. It should have just been a straightforward 1v1 Rousey versus Becky Lynch. But I think it would have been a better match. It would have been way better. But they had to squeeze Charlotte in somehow because Charlotte needs yeah. to be an event at WrestleMania. Yeah. It's just... Uh, it feels Even forced. Ric Flair. He never had time WrestleMania. Well, not properly. I know you got the double main event rubbish. But he never properly did. No, no but... His double main event was like halfway through the match. You could argue that he should have. Uh, I don't argue. Oh, no. oh, That's God. like... That's like calling the Kiss Demon being one of the main events of Nitro. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, they only they only did that with the Kiss Demon because that was the contractual that, wording. Exactly. Yeah. Your main event, which was the opening match of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, it's a main event, honest. <laughs> it's so good when we get out of the way first. It's a main event because it's costing us a lot of money. <laughs> but I think... In 10 years' time, Rhea Ripley, will she be bigger than Charlotte Flair? Potentially. Yeah, and I think based on potential, the fact I think, she's doing yeah. it on her own, she's doing it on her own as Cameron said, she's not doing it because she's got a lucky second name. She has to work her ass off hmm. to get where she is. And I think providing they don't mess it up, which given my lack of faith in WWE, I imagine they'll try and mess it up. But if she can get through that, I don't see why not. She has had two barnstorming matches in the last month or so, as far as I'm concerned. She had Tony Storm at Worlds Collide, mm. which was great, and the match with um, Bianca Belair at Portland Takeover, mm. um, which was also pretty bloody good. Um, although it was kind of tainted by the fact that you, you you thought in the back of your head, there's no way that Bianca yeah. Belair is winning this. Wow, um, and then derailing the whole Charlotte NXT challenge thing, but never mind. Mm. <clears throat> that was the only kind of drawback to that. It was still a cracking match, though. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's really me. Okay, mm. strong. I'd say fair strong. enough. Fair enough. Strong, 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 strong. Who's going next? Can I go next? Yeah, go for it. I go next. Um, my pick, uh, the one I went for, I've uh, already alluded to in my conversation, uh, is one, the man Becky Lynch. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've gone for, for Becky because um, I think you made a good point in the Slack chat about it that she's probably like on the cusp of, or you know, she's at the top of a big push at the moment, so is she going to be there in 10 years' time? But when I was looking at this, when we first got started doing it, um, a lot of the point I got stuck on was when I was thinking of the greatest wrestler, I kept getting stuck on the most important wrestler. Um, because I think initially I was thinking of like, oh, it's got to be Lita because Lita genuinely changed the industry. You know, um, it took a long time for her effects to kind of filter through properly. But you can argue like, you know, there's a pre-Lita and a post-Lita as women's wrestling. If that, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was trying to think of someone like, well, but, like someone who's like, like to be the greatest, I think you need to change the industry. You think about all the kind of greatest male wrestlers, you know, it's like Hulk Hogan, um, Stone Cold, The Rock. They've all kind of like done things that have changed the industry around them. So the only person I can think of who's really come close to that and arguably has done it in places is Becky Lynch. Um, this is, of course, talking about the um, feud we talked about as well with Ronda Rousey post Survivor Series. Um, where she, Becky led the invasion into what's it onto Raw and then beat everybody up, um, yeah. beat Ronda Rousey up, got a nose smashed in and uh, went into the crowd covered in blood. And then I think that was when the, the kind of man persona came from, which then ended up with a main event in WrestleMania. And I think you know, we, we talked about, um, or you said about people having a connection to the audience. I think what she did there was prove that... Um, a female wrestler can connect with an audience to that level. 
um, because that shot of her in the crowd covered in blood, like I think that's probably one of the most iconic moments in their wrestling since. Like, has anybody else had like like, like maybe Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30 winning the belts and holding those holding the two belts up, like in like a big proper iconic image that you can like imagine being repeated forever. Like, mm, I'd probably, probably give CM Punk winning at yeah. Money in the Bank. Yeah, or him sat at the top of the um, ramp, cutting mm-hmm. a promo. Like, yeah, but that, that's back now. Uh, what? How far back is that? Eight years? Nine years? Something like that. Nine years coming. Yeah. Um, I'd say as far as an image of yeah, I know what you mean. The image, the still image of Becky Lynch on the top of the ramp, covered yeah. in blood, albeit accidentally that yeah. it was a hard way cut. But, but she yeah. made it work, though, but, didn't she? Yeah. As far as a career kind of like, this is the image that launches this character. Yeah. It's kind of similar. The way she's gone, she's gone like a kind of stone cold way about her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that she is this kind of like mean arse kicker. Yeah. And so I would argue that it's almost like the the image at WrestleMania 13 of Stone Cold with the blood dripping down his face and the sharp shooter. Where it's like Mm -hmm. it just... Yeah, it's almost like Becky Lynch was never made to get over. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. she did. She kind of. Well, I'd of always that. say that when the four horsewomen got brought up from NXT, Becky Lynch was the one that no one really cared about. No. Exactly. Because she, I think she won the Charlotte SmackDown Flair. Belt, didn't she? Yeah, she won the SmackDown belt but then fairly, it. but then dropped it to Alexa Bliss. Yeah. In the tables match. Yeah, weirdly, Alexa Bliss seemed to be the one who was coming out best from everything. She was, she was like holding all these kind of belts left, right, and centre, wasn't she? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I like you say like. I think what well, oh, the, the four, four horsewomen of the group kind of, you know, they're a group of people who did, yeah. you know, kind of spearheaded that women's revolution trend from NXT through to the main roster. But like you say, Becky Lynch was always the one who was kind of like at the bottom yeah. or the lower tier. It was always about Shasha Banks, Shasha, Sasha Banks and Bailey. <laughs> and Charlotte Flair, because of the name Shasha. And then Becky was just like the other one of the group, the kind of Ringo star, if you will, of the group. Yeah, but oh. she was always like, "Oh yeah," and Becky Lynch as well. Yeah, but way- and it was only now that she's become she's done the whole the man yeah. Becky Lynch thing. I mean, she forced and the, she like, has basically on social media. She forced the, the the feud through with Ronda Rousey, turned it into like an actual feud that pushed it through to WrestleMania. I mean, yeah. the the only argument there is like, if Ronda Rousey wasn't there, would it have been a main event? Because obviously Ronda Rousey is like she brings in that audience from outside, so you can kind of yeah. It's like well, yeah, you she, she brings that, that to yeah. her. But I think where it kind of shows uh, things in Becky's favor is the way that the the WWE machine has got behind Becky Lynch because she's on the front of the video games. She's on the front of you know she's in the position where you know you would see like a Stone Cold or that kind of character. Like Becky Lynch is there yeah. now. I think she's proven that a women's wrestler, to, you know, in a, or, as bad as that sounds or whatever, like they can carry a company. You can put a company shoulders on top of Becky Lynch's and she'll be able to, she'll, she'll, you know, she can carry that football or reach that brass ring or whatever Vince wants to say. And they've proven that with, you know, the way they're putting all the money behind it. I think she's like, last year she was the top, she was like the third best merch seller behind Bray uh, Wyatt and like Roman Reigns. I think they were the top Here's two. a question. Go on. If you were to swap Tessa Blanchard in her current position with Becky Lynch, do you think that would work? I don't know. I don't know. Well, if... as in, if Becky Lynch had been the one fighting Sammy Callahan. Yeah, if Becky Lynch was the one to break the mold at Impact Wrestling and win the quote unquote men's championship with the persona she has in WWE, would that have worked the same to the same level? Albeit Impact Wrestling is a much smaller entity yeah. than WWE. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would it have the the same effect and the same sort of ripple it's so, through the world. Would I'll, I'll be surmising that say, what if like Becky Lynch would get the quote unquote women's money in the bank briefcase, mm-hmm. and then say bugger this and try and cash it in on a bloke? Yeah, would that that would probably work? Yeah, actually. I think she's got the swagger to pull off. She's she's got yeah. that yeah, kind that of persona to it. It, yeah. it would. You should pull that off. Like it she, never she, happened. She, she, she can make it believable. No, it never happened in WWE because Vince hates the idea of intergender wrestling. I'm not too keen on it yeah. myself. No. But, um, yeah, I could see her try to pull that one off. I think for it to work, you need to have a strong character. And yeah. a character like a Tessa Blanchard, a character like a Becky Lynch, or even a Rhea Ripley, they could pull it off because it's believable. Yeah. Yeah. It's... 
and that's but, the big thing. Yeah, I don't think like your Bailey would be able to do it or anything like that. No, 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 no way. No. And that's nothing against Bailey. She's no. a great wrestler, but she's not that wrestler. She's not like the kind of women that would go, yeah, I'm going to crack some skulls and I don't care what gender you are. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what do you think is what? Um, and that's what I think. Becky's got that. Becky Lynch works. Yeah. Yeah. I think, that, okay. like I say, where, where, where's, like, I think we'll look back is that, and look, uh, look back and see why she, in my, my, my opinion, will be the greatest women's wrestler. Because I think she has <laughs> changed, she has changed things. I mean, yeah, there's, also, yeah, yeah. there's lots uh, of other things going a, on feed into uh, it, but I think uh, she's, like, they've let her carry the thing. Like, I mean, they let her say, they let refer to them as uh, belts. I mean, when was the last time anybody referred to them as belts? I think that kind of showed this. Must be like Vince must have some kind of like. I'd never actually thought of that. He doesn't like it. He, yeah. He, he don't call them belts. He doesn't like belts the belts. He up. But she was Becky yeah, two belts. Think... They even did a T-shirt with it. Yeah, they did. So I think, I think that kind of but shows. I think that's because. I think that's not so much Becky breaking the mold. I think that's just because that got over and because that yeah. fits her character. She's not going to call it a championship. She's not going to call it a championship opportunity. She's going to call it. I want the strap. Yeah. I think, because that is the kind of character she is. Yeah, I think it proved like you know the marketing, but if it wouldn't, you know, the, the, the WWE system machine, they would know. Obviously, well, no, we're going to step down that straight away. That's not going to work. So it's not going to happen. You know, we're not going to make a yeah. T-shirt of it. But they kind of know, like, oh no, she's in, she, she's in a position where like the marketing can go right. No, that works. We're going to sell that, and boom, it sells. Especially like like all the man T-shirts and that sort of stuff. Like it's, she's, it's like a proof of merch seller, which I think is you know that's half of your job at WWE, isn't it? Is selling that merch and keeping yeah. money going through that, through, through, through that way. But I think as a whole, like the last year or so, um, she's really kind of, she has changed things, but it's whether or not that can then continue on. Um, you know, cause you, can she headline another WrestleMania? Can she have a feud with somebody other than Ronda Rousey that can carry a WrestleMania build? <laughs> and, you know, we're not going to know about that for kind of the next few years. Although who kind of start of a build with Shayna Baszler looks quite good with a, biting mm. her neck and that sort of weird stuff but Jane is a beast mm. isn't she um, so I think it kind of depends on how she kind of works over the next kind of few years but I don't think you, can, you don't necessarily need like a long career to be called the greatest um, no nope. because I mean I mean Stone Cold Stone Cold Steve Austin had a long career but his Stone Cold career was only about two three years yeah when, like, he uh, actually, what, Stone Cold like, the, <laughs> the proper kind of industry dominating Stone Cold yeah return Stone Cold as a character what should we go from his first Title win? 98, sure. 98, yeah, 98 to 2003 yeah. then. There's what, a year out of that through injury? So, well, <clears throat> yeah, so about four years, yeah. yeah. So it only took him four yeah. years, really. And it's in that kind of first 18 months where he like he properly changed the industry. So I don't think you need to be a long, probably a long time to have, be able to be through the races about what you can do. Like, when you get that chance, what you can do with it. And I think she's proven that when she was given that chance, she's really pushed it as far as she can, broke some glass ceilings. And yeah, I think she's uh, changed the game somewhat. How much of that, and I'm not putting this question forward to decry what you're saying and decrying her achievements, mm-hmm. but how much help has she received, if any, from her real life relationship with Seth Rollins being so publicized? That's not at the moment, obviously, yeah, because obviously no. now Seth turned heel, they can't really reference it that yeah. much. But like a year ago, it was like, oh yeah. Were they doing that? Was that happening pre WrestleMania? Um, was it I think it came out in May last yeah, year. Yeah, so I think it was just after. after WrestleMania because the first photo that she could put on Instagram of them kissing yeah. was from the WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. And they were backstage. And WWE put it up going, oh, yeah, uh, Seth Rollins and um, Becky Lynch put a photo on Instagram of an intimate moment. I was like, that's not very fucking intimate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you intimate snap. I, I think, we I think seen... Seth Rollins are. Seth Rollins are far more intimate in the past. We've talked about those people, haven't we? The little Seth yes, Rollins. We talk, we've established that half of this podcast have seen Seth Rollins' as junk. Yes. <laughs> um, I, don't I don't want to. I don't know. I don't think. Um, I don't, I, may, who knows? Maybe. But I think the work she did between Survivor Series and WrestleMania to get herself in that position. Because I think there's a period in that where probably, you know, she wasn't in that WrestleMania main event and she forced her way back into it. Yeah. Because I think it was because she had that concussion, so she was out of Survivor Series and missed that, and then that was able to kind of extend the feud through to WrestleMania and her to get the main event. So I think like a lot of that she did herself, but you know who knows, whatever it's wrestling, it's politics. Um, yeah. But I think the way she's kind of carried her character through all that and just really kind of pushed it as far as she can, 
yeah, she's cracking. Becky Lynch yeah, is my pick. I can see what you mean. Becky Lynch is your pick. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm dying to see what Al's pick. Alan, Alan, is it part of the plan? Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> You go Jesus. next, Sam. I'm going next. All right, okay. If he says Sherry, we, we, we cut his mic off. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Phil's already sort of just mentioned her. Oh. And it's a woman who, when she debuted, I didn't like. And not in a kind of, oh, she's a heel and she's so evil way. I genuinely just didn't like her. Oh, wow. I remember, I just, I remember this. How just mental I thought she was bloody boring. And she was another one of those, oh, great, she's come across some MMA, she's a serious bloody fighter, she doesn't really understand the, you know, the whole razzmatazz side of wrestling, so we're just going to get this straightforward, boring shoot, same thing every fucking time. Oh, she's choked them out, matches. And um, it was a really, really weird thing that made me change my mind, but it's Shayna Baszler. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought I'd get that in there. Because the next part of the story is, it wasn't really a wrestling thing that made me change my mind. It was an episode of Up, 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 Down, Down. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Run okay. it. The kind of example I'll give is, I, I'm really into Warhammer 40k. Okay. It's like probably the thing I'm the most nerdy about. Fantastic. That, Painting the miniatures. Yeah, it's just that it's not as popular, so I... Barely talk about it. We can, it but, we can talk Warhammer. Um, but um, the whole story of Warhammer is that the this one guy united all of mankind, right? Mm. And he's the emperor of mankind. And um, uh, the space marines all suddenly start worshiping him. Mm. But he is really he united Earth by being like, oh, there's no such thing as a religion. It's all science. Um, but then they start worshipping him as a god and he's like I am not a god yeah. and like that's exactly the thing that a god would say yeah <laughs> so, Yay! yeah so that happens like in life yeah I watched it one night and I was like because she wasn't trying to be this character um, she was just basically telling all these stories about how she used to play video games with all these lads and kick their heads in afterwards <laughs> <laughs> they thought oh, they're gonna get beats. So you know, she used to go to like a karate club, and all the like the local lassies were like really, really scared of fighting her. So all the dads would like pull the la- pull the daughters out of the karate class that she was in. Oh, so she ended up on her own. Oh, so she, oh, she had to that. fight. She had to fight the boys <laughs> because she had this reputation. She's basically killing like or now or choking. The it was like an actual <laughs> killing machine. An absolute machine. Even when she was like. Twelve. <laughs> so it was just like, right, okay, and she was just really, really funny with it as well. And so I was like, yeah, okay. And it was just, a, it wasn't even a promo. It wasn't even. It was just a general talk with another human being, Xavier Woods in this case. Mm. Yeah. As they were playing, I think it was like Turtles in Time or something like that. They were playing, oh, of course. Good choice of game. Yep. So they were. Um, so she was just sort of talking about him as a normal human being. I was like, going, you know, all right, actually. Now I know a bit of her background, and she's not just carbon cut out, here I am from MMA, which is, I, in my opinion, often a bit kind of like, you end up with like the wrestlers that are really, really dry and dull. Hello, Brock. Usually. Matt, Matt Riddle being the exception at the minute. <laughs> <who's not. laughs> um, but it's, uh, and then that kind of made me not, I still kind of think, you know, she does some excellent heel work, and it's still like, you know, her uh, Bushina. But um, I quite I like her better as a wrestler as a result of knowing a little bit more about her in mm. her background. As a little sidebar, that up, up, down, down is quite good for that. Yeah, Give it's really good. The, the I think it is the fact that these are actual human beings and not just robots. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's that's the important thing, I think, that came to your realisation, Cameron, that she was more than just this gen- generic MMA star. She's, you know, an actual human being that's, like, 
me and you. She likes video games. She likes maybe not. We don't like hicking people's heads in because well, look at us. But we like watching it rather than doing it ourselves. Yeah, exactly. speak, for you, speak for yourself, you, and speak for yourself. Well, I don't live in the rough and tumble like you. I do. I live out in the sticks now because I have to do these things. <laughs> but I think that goes back to my point earlier on about connecting to the fans. She made that connection to you. It wasn't in the ring. It was something outside altogether and suddenly completely away from wrestling. You could see, you could relate to her. And I think that's important. Yeah. It's missing in wrestling. You cannot relate to, I mean, who could relate to Baron Corbin? None of exactly, us Exactly, yeah. I don't, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not even his own You've mother. got that. Oh, no, his own mother probably went, I should have fell down the stairs. Anyway. Catherine built through Corbin. Oh, God. Ah, never mind. <laughs> but it's the fact that she's a human. But when she gets in that ring, she's a cold, calculated killer. Yeah. And I think that's that you know it's all fun and games outside the ring when the bell that bell goes whoever's in front of her they're dead yep and she had um, throughout her NXT or two NXT title reigns she had some absolutely cracking matches yep um, built it up to built up that title to a, a fantastic degree to the point where now obviously you, you were waiting to see who would come along and topple her and it's an achievement to topple her and Ray yep. Ripley's done that yep um, so um, and then I was absolutely begging her to win the Rumble because mm. I thought, it, obviously, as I said, she would have been the interesting choice for the Women's Rumble. But they went with Charlotte, but whatever. Um, and at least she's getting a WrestleMania date with, seemingly with Becky Lynch, um, which is, you know, she's come across as all, well, as a vampire, <laughs> Does, which, I okay. What's going on? Well, that's, um, just, that's the WWE. I remember buying people before in NXT. Machine. Uh, no, she never bit anyone. Um, not to like uh, in the neck, anyway. Yeah, maybe like their fingers to escape a submission, but, but she, not. Yeah, in I don't the think neck. she bit anybody during war games. If you're going to bite somebody, it's going to be during that match, isn't it? It's going to be during war games, yeah, pretty much. But um, you just climb off, the, you just climb to the top of the cage and dive off, because that's what you're doing. A war game. Oh wait, no, war games is a riff on it, doesn't it? It's got a riff on it. Yeah. Um, but they've, um, yeah, I can see Shayna Baszler having many more main events obviously holding either Smackdown or the Raw Women's title and having like some cracking matches and carrying on what she's been doing I think she's great yeah I can't argue with that like she's cracking she's also got absolutely stonking theme music as well (laughs) that's off the battle isn't it (laughs) yeah I I don't know I don't know I was walking around Edinburgh one day last year after um I finished recording a, a few episodes of that fantastic Doctor Who podcast, The Polis Box, by no, the way. I'll, I'll, I'll believe um, that. Don't worry about it, you and don't yeah, worry about it. Uh, and and uh, yeah, next episode is The Green Death, by the way. Pertwee <laughs> Legend. Yeah, well, Jesus. Well, no. that, that whole thing um, has been bleeped out. We won't hear the thing for that. Don't worry about it. And I, I don't know why, but I was walking down into Waverley Station with Shayna Baszler's theme song in my head. Best feeling. <laughs> Best feeling. <laughs> walking Just, to a massive crowd with... Just kind about Edinburgh listening to that. Yeah, pretty much. But it was brilliant. Wow. I was chuffed. So, yeah, Sheena Baszler, my Flawless. vote. All right. And Alan. Uh, right. Uh, Mr. Hang on. Alan. Let me get settled down, ready for this one. Right. What was the question again? Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Now, now you see, is it my surprise? I don't watch that much women's wrestling. <laughs> well, you do, but it's not 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 in the websites that people would expect to find wrestling on. But go I don't on, don't watch many proper wrestling. But I like old wrestling. I like old wrestling. But but I uh, I'm not going to go for an old person. But okay. I think we to mention them. All right. Now now I'm going to mention the fabulous Moolah. Yes, we know what she did. <laughs> but, <laughs> or didn't do. That didn't do. But. <laughs> She, she was the face of women's wrestling for quite some time. Because and she really she forced everybody else down? Well, you know, she did, yes. <laughs> yes. But <laughs> I suppose you know, that's an achievement in itself. She, she, was, she was, you know, the face of women's wrestling, certainly, like, at the beginning. She, um, 
uh, was it WrestleMania 2, I think, where uh, she had a match at, if I remember correctly, it might be the only one she did. Or oh, wasn't she uh, the um, uh, Madison, Square Do- Madison Square Garden screw job? She did, yes. That she um, she was dressed as the Spider Lady or the Spider when uh, when she took the title off Wendy Richter. That was that was good. But that was kind of they were kind of doing a mix of wrestling back then, where they had kind of the Wendy Richter was kind of the prototype for what we get in a lot of women's wrestling today. Um, but she uh, she she was had one of them attitudes backstage. Apparently, back to what you were saying before about the women challenging for uh, the men's title. Um, will the women ever get paid the same as the men? Or is that another debate? Hmm. Mm. Because apparently that was Wendy Richter from she wanted paid, you know, more because she was a main event woman, but the WWE didn't see it yeah. at all. Um, so we move on a bit. We had like Rock and Robin was there. I as knew well. we talk about it. Well, <laughs> Sensational Sherry was there for a little while in there. Then they just pitted out in the like 89 with the women's division just went. And then Vince decided to bring it back in 93. Um, the Lundra Blair's been the head of the, uh, head of the class for that one, but they didn't really have too many. They brought a lot of Japanese people in, like Bull Nakano, she was pretty good. And then, yeah. uh, you had Bertha Fay, who was given a, a city gimmick. <laughs> don't say Bertha uh, Fay, please don't. <laughs> uh, um, no, she was a, she was a good, totally different wrestler in Japan. Uh, Rona Singh, I think she's called. Um, yeah, and then they give her a stupid comic gimmick. Of course they did. It's WWE and WF at the time. Um, and then they brought in some Japanese wrestlers as well. Uh, Aja Kong they brought in. And um, if you want to see some sexist comments, well, I think we might have covered it, but the match at Survivor Series 95. Oh, God. Oh, boy. On commentary. Oh, boy. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, so then, of course, famously, the um, Medusa went to WCW and threw the uh, belt in the trash. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure the exact story on that. I mean, some... Bish off side here, apparently. Yeah, it was basically Bish off side here. No, no, seems... about how she ended up getting there. Like, I think Money. Just nobody realised that a contract had expired. Just nobody... Well, been... That, you know. She left, and because no one gave a shit about the women's title anymore, I mean, she took I, it with her, and no one asked why. But <laughs> she was signed. She was supposed to be signed for a match at the Royal Rumble, you see, in '96, because that was back in '95, and she was signed on, um, or at least announced in the magazine, a match between her and Arja Khan. And it looks like like nobody actually bothered looking to see when her contract expired. Uh, funny enough, the same story. Uh, mean Jean Auckland tells us. So you know when he went to WCW. Yeah. Mm. They asked him, was it more money? He goes, no, just nobody offered me a new contract, so I just left. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Shocking, <laughs> so isn't I think it? Almost the same thing happened. Nobody bothered checking when the contract was out of due. And then, like, because I don't think they wanted to ban the women's division there and then, because they put some money in its Survivor Series promoting that Survivor Series match and promoting Naja Khan in that match. So that was going to set up. And then all of a sudden, the Lundra Blaze is gone, the women's division is destroyed, and, and that's that. And then. The next stage is the more famous uh, Attitude Era women's division, which... Right oh, God. Oh, I've got... I'm scared now. Bloody but, Sable. Yes, that, you know, you, you had, like, Jacqueline, she was a great worker. She had to carry a lot of people. Luna Vachon had to carry a lot of people. And then you had the, like... They all had to carry Sable, basically. Because well. <laughs> <laughs> Sable is shockingly shit. <laughs> Well, yep. Then you have the likes of Lita, Ivory, Trish Stratus, who uh, could do with a bit of polishing, but became good. And the workhorses uh, like Victoria and uh, Molly Holly as well. You know, they they could like Molly Holly could certainly put a match on, but she didn't have the look for WWE, did she? That was, uh, and then she had to shave herself bald just to get herself on the WrestleMania card. And didn't it? Oh a, yeah. Didn't yep. have a terrible storyline when they kept making fun of her ass or something. Yes. Yeah, oh, fat. probably. But Mickey James was fat, according to. Oh, we're getting there. Don't WWE storylines. Don't worry, we're getting there. God. Um, so then they abandoned the women's division, or at least the title, a little bit. Do you remember when China had it for a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Well, again, apparently that was the China felt then she should be challenging for the men's title and main event and things. And was it was not originally going to be China versus Stone Cold. It was ninety nine nine something. I plan. think that was a Vince Russo swerve. I, you are correct in that. I don't think that Just was ever... swerve, bro. I don't think that was ever <laughs> wow. really going up. That was, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it was just a little storyline filler thing. Um, 
I don't think that match was going to happen at that time, but I think she was hoping it would happen in the future. And then they the scrapped the women's title very briefly when China couldn't reach an agreement with WWE, and uh, and then they put it up for grabs in the six pack challenge at um, the Virus Series in uh, two thousand one. And Jazz was the mystery person. Anyone remember it? Uh, oh God! Ooh. I think early two thousands. It was it was the, it was the two thousand one Survivor Series. You know the winner takes all thing. Oh yeah. Um, Trish Stratus won that one. Yeah, that's when she got her first title. And then they, they built the women's division then, and then yeah, they had Jazz, and uh, they, they eventually bought like Mickey James for that great feud with Trish. <laughs> oh yes, the <laughs> one where. Tea. At moment <laughs> Mickey James got nigh on fired because of one hand signal yes mm. see she, she did that she did that about three years too late or something if, uh, maybe six years if that was in the Attitude Era oh my you know they would love it wouldn't they but, oh they would have they would have been absolutely amazed at that that would have been amazing yeah <laughs> yeah um, but yeah you had like Michelle McCoon I quite like Layla she was quite good in that in that era that's uh, a low bar to achieve. <laughs> no, but like then you're into like the there was Lita and and Trish who were yep. amazing. Uh, well, as we say, Trish was a bit yeah, to begin with, but then got way better. To be fair to her, mm-hmm. absolutely. They were they, Lita and Trish were not immune from doing bloody bra and panties matches. But well, nobody was at that point in time. So yeah, no one was no. because you had like this was like the we're, we're getting to the depths of the sort of mid two thousands. John Laurinaitis, Victoria's Secret model. Kelly Kelly was one, wasn't she? Kelly, Ke- God love Kelly Kelly. She was 19 when she got signed. Yep. And, and she was showed. doing those expose things on ECW TV. She was 19 years old. And then <sighs> I should feel bad about it. Never mind. <laughs> there's Tori Wilson and um, Stacey Keebler as well. They were pretty much eye candy, although Tori Wilson did learn to work a little bit. A little bit. Um, define a little bit. Like, she didn't kill anyone. So we had Tori Wilson did the um, storyline with her dead father. Yep. Which was which was excellent. Classic. Uh, was that Dawn Marie as well? Yes, yeah. Yes, Dawn it was. Marie. Who, who the WWE like to like um, forget the fact that they sacked her when she was pregnant. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Yep. Yeah, John John Marie got sacked when she was pregnant. She was six months pregnant. Classy. Oh. Classy, classy move. Um, and then and then moving on moving on from that area, um, you had Lita's final match. Or at least uh, you know was a final match at the time. Do you remember when Crime Time was selling the thrush cream out to the yes. audience? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and her vibrator and all oh, that. Classy. Some classy bit there for women's uh, women's wrestling. And then women in had, general. <laughs> you had like Leah Cool, didn't you come along? And Beth Phoenix, who seemed to do pretty well for herself. Yeah. Um, and then, we, have we mentioned Kelly Kelly? Yeah. No, but you have now. Did, did he? I thought did. The, the, I, I don't know where I might, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah we mentioned the model of that you did get a bit and of course the Bella twins Ugh. where do they yeah. come do they come have they learned to wrestle enough or are they still in the Dolly Bird section <laughs> they're one of the people who kind of straddles the two areas aren't they because they were like fully divas WWE wrestlers but then they had to kind of reposition themselves when the four horsewomen and the women's evolution thing kicked off so they had to kind of re- actually no we are wrestlers and yeah, like, but they disappeared for a while, the, hmm. the Bellas, and then they came back. Because Nikki Bella had a neck injury, and yep. Brie yeah. Bella had a, went off to have a kid with Daniel Bryan. So they came back for a little bit, didn't they? But they, I think they, they tried to like show pictures of the, like, clips of them training and like, you know, oh, well, we're proper, proper fighters and stuff. Uh, nobody bought that nobody for a bought minute. That for a second. But I think there's that period where like a lot of the people who were positioned as that kind of like the, the quote, diva style of wrestler had to then become like you know your proper wrestler if that makes sense yeah you had to become a wrestler yeah. not just I have tits look at me <laughs> yeah had um, Natalia came along as well um, I think that's uh, I, I apologize why have we forgotten about AJ Lee um who oh yeah AJ <laughs> I think you know I think you know that that, that timeline doesn't exist anymore <laughs> Oh, yeah. See him on the cause, Fox show, isn't he? Because of who she, because of who she married. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, wow. That, that, that timeline is uh, being a. Been but it's erased. fair though. I don't think she gets the credit that she deserves anymore because no, she doesn't get the credit no. at all. No. From what she deserves, because she was for for 
<laughs> she carried that Divas title in a serious manner that would be befitting an actual uh, championship. A, a, women, a women's title now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only five years early. Yep. You know. Because that was a horrendous looking belt. Oh, it's a terrible belt. Uh, it was not great. It was like if Barbie had a better wrestling belt, exactly. that's what it looked like. It was it was was like you know, I don't think it looked like a butterfly. Maybe yeah, it was a butterfly belt. It was a butterfly, yeah. yeah. That, was, that, was the, that, that was the idea. A wrestling belt looks like a butterfly. It's like, okay. What's better um, as a belt? Um, a butterfly or a giant penny? <laughs> Either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why did they get rid of those old tag team belts? I'm sorry. I know it's off topic, but I love those old belts. I'm going to further sidetrack this for a second. What do we think of the AEW belt? Um, With the weird sort of like oval shapes. Well, the um, the heavyweight championship belt. I don't mind it. It's, oh, it, it's kind of like got it. a touch of the the uh, IWGP belt about it. Uh, yes and no. A little bit about you no. Know, it's, it's a little it's, bit. Yeah, it's got the girth, inspired by it. They got that kind of size belt to it. It looks it looks like a belt, like a championship belt. You know what I mean? Like you, like you're something yeah. a championship have. So yeah, I, I um I don't mind it. I can't remember what the but things like the belts. Can't remember what they look like tag team belts. No clue. Women's belt. No clue. Because yeah. the main thing I remember from watching the women's matches on AEW is the one who comes out like Freddie Mercury. I don't think that's <laughs> the actual intention of the division, but that's what's happened. You know what can you do? Yeah. There you go. Anyway, so Al, right, you've right, taken right. us on a journey through women's wrestling from the, the, the late nineties to the two thousands. But where where is the Melbourne train going to stop <laughs> out for your pick? Melbourne yeah. train. Oh my goodness! I'm what tunnel bored, is he pulling into? And I'm going to give you a scenario afterwards as well. Okay. Right. Uh, I think I'm just going to go for Charlotte Flair. I'm afraid. Oh, oh okay. I think she's got the lineage and she's had the matches. Here's my point. She's at the top of Italy right now. Where else can she go? Yeah, but how long has Randy Orton and John Cena been at the top for? Randy Orton's only been at the top because he's willing to be mediocre and just keep signing. But I mean, these guys have been up there for about 18 years or so now. It's like... Why can't she be up there for eighteen years? I'm not. I'm not saying she can't be there for eighteen years. What I am saying is, how is she going to be relevant in eighteen years? She's had pretty much everything that she can possibly have flung her away, yeah, flung away in the exactly. first four years. But exactly. What you're forgetting, what you're forgetting, that's the WWE way these days. Well, yeah, exactly. What's Roman Reigns yeah. got to do? Roman Reigns has done everything. He's at the top. You know that's yeah. the way the WWE does it. Do let's do it again with somebody um, else. Exactly. This is the scenario I'm going to give you. Okay. Oh, hello. How badly would a career be affected if Mr. Flair did something silly? Now, as we've seen, Mr. Flair's done a few silly things throughout his years. <laughs> you don't see. <laughs> well, I think she. Well, has she escaped that legacy? I don't think. No. no. He, he did. He did. Did he try to? He started a trademark suit against him over the use of him, the, uh, the, the, uh, the the man thing with Becky Lynch. Yeah. yeah. He settled out with sure Are they the settled already, have they? Yeah, I, I think so. Maybe I haven't said that. I thought that's what they said. Because I thought if anything so. was going to kind of, like, put them to push you up to one side, it would be that, some kind of, you know, because I think as soon as you go after their money, that's when Vince and people kind of wake up and start, you know, no, you can't do that to us, sort of thing. Um, but I don't know. Because, I mean, obviously, Tamina's still hired. Which is very much in the well, that's because that's because they couldn't find her like Chad Gasper for the okay. longest time, and he eventually got sacked. I don't know. The thing about the, on, on the converse of that scenario, um, imagine what it'd be like when Ric Flair dies. <sighs> oh, I get the funny feeling that he's going to be like Hogan, though. He's just going to keep going, going forever. Going forever. But you know, uh, her winning, you know, going to equal his number of victories, uh, you know, his number of championship run, run, runs, whatever. You know, that, that that's a story that can write itself. Oh, okay. She'll have 16 titles at the end of the year, probably. Probably, yeah. Um, <laughs> probably, yeah. End of the year, that's been a bit generous. Oh, she's on eight or nine now, isn't she, I think? Something like that. Yeah. But um, I think, you know, yeah, if like, he dies, then that gives her, like, you know, like a great number of character things to work on, either to kind of, you know, re- reject it or to kind of embrace it and try to do things for it. So it's difficult, if, isn't it? But if he's just something bad, who knows? If she's going to be the greatest of all time, she can't solely rely on her surname. Mm. And that's the danger she's got with her being her. Yeah. That Ric Flair passes away, she becomes a Ric Flair tribute act. 
She needs to be her own thing, her own entity, and she's trying to well, do that. Well, could be. I think Rick Flair been his own tribute, tribute act for about 15 years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I don't see that. I don't mean to be wishing that, but like at some point, Rick Flair just kept doing Rick Flair matches. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, but... Yeah, she might fall into that category. She might fall into that, um, you know, like the, the Charlotte Flair match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Has she ever done, just out of curiosity, has she ever done the Ric Flair flop in a match? No. Oh, she does the corner thing, doesn't she? That would be a funny, just once. Just, just once. She'd bounce be, back off. It would be a funny spot. <laughs> oh, you and, oh my goodness. What? <laughs> it's true. But she does the corner flip, doesn't she? Yes. <laughs> does she do the spot where she stands on the turnbuckle for an age and waits for somebody to slam her off it? <laughs> I mean, God. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So your pick uh, for the greatest women's wrestler is Charlotte Flair. Yeah, yeah. All right. You thought I'd go for Santina Morella or something like that. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh, we nearly got through it. All right, as well. Yep, almost. almost. <laughs> right, so we've got our four so, picks. We've got four names. All right. Now begins the politicking. Pol- politicking, politicizing. Who knows? Politicizing, whatever. Politicking. <laughs> Who is the the number one pick? Okay, I think I know one person's going to disagree with but Can we discount Charlotte Flair immediately because we're talking about ten years into the future? Well, if we were if we were debating John Cena in two thousand and five, and we were talking ten years in the future, and John Cena's still on top in two thousand fifteen, that's a point. That's a point. <laughs> That's a very good See, point. That's, 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 that's the worst thing about Alan, is that he kind of disguises a lot of it with buffoonery. But then he makes like an excellent point every now and then. <laughs> and it comp- catches you completely off guard. Everyone at work says that as well. It's like a, like he's like a literal buffoon. And then, bang, there comes out some truth. He's like, oh, I, what, what? I can't cope with that. What's going on? Like, like when the bushwhackers are the best thing. <laughs> oh, Jesus. They are. <laughs> anyway. Oh, God. Um, I think if we're talking where they are now compared to where they can be in ten in twenty thirty, Christ, that seems a weird number. That is a weird number. I think if we're being honest, it's either going to come down to. I see Becky Lynch to me is already on the way to being that top level. Yeah. Well, surely she's not that far behind Charlotte Flair. She's not. That's the thing. So again, she's going to hit that ceiling. It's sooner than the other two are. I mean, Rhea Ripley is not at the bottom, but she's sort of in the opening start of, the climb. S- start of it. Shayna Baszler is practically at the bottom, if you think about it, as okay, far can as... I, can I ask a question which I generally don't know? Go, for, go on. Help. Right. All the other past NXT women's champs, mm-hmm. have any of them faded into obscurity yet or got bumped real way down the card let me have a look and see I might have a look at the history of that Emma there was Emma a champion I think she was was she no uh, Paige God. Asuka's your main one Paige let me see Asuka Paige Kyrie Sane no Kyrie Sane don't think ever I don't think she ever held it I, yeah she I, did I don't know Kyrie Sane did did she yeah it really? was a treasure well, she I think Kyrie, Kyrie Sane topped was the one that ended uh, Shayna Baszler's first run Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So here's the list of the, the four women's champions Paige, Charlotte, Sasha, Bailey, Asuka, Ember Moon. That might be the one. Mm. Shayna Baszler, oh, yeah. Kyrie Sane, and Rhea Ripley. Whoa. I think it's the only yeah, Ember Moon, isn't it? Uh, they didn't mention Sasha Banks at all in all the women, so apologies for I that. I did. But, uh, yeah, no, oh, no. Sorry. That's fine. No, I mean, in, in the whole lineage of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, I, th- I did forget about that too, probably. Right. That's okay. I think she's but got potential, but it's whether or not she can actually a her body will hold up and be, level. you know, with her leaving basically for most of the last year. Whether that's something like that will happen again, but who knows? Yep. Well, obviously so. Paige is another one who, who who would discount because of the injuries. But um, see, that was that was injury that caused that, not her fading into obscurity. Yeah. So that's no, that, different. No, that's what I'm saying. That that's my next point. Is is Alexa Bliss still recovered fully? Mm, Did she wrestle in the no. Rumble? Yeah, she was in the Rumble. But she's, she's quite she sporadic would, with her. Um, she spent ages in the Rumble. She in a, yeah. she's in a tag team with um, Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross, yeah. Yeah. It's a weird so combo. As, as, as well as lasting 10 years, you've got to try and avoid any sort of bad injuries for the next 10 years as well. Yeah. Although, I don't know, like, um, 
the iconic return back from a long injury layoff is a part of every wrestler's like big wrestler's career. Surely, mm. Stone Cold coming back, Triple H coming back. You know that kind of big return and the massive pop. It's yeah. like an edge. Edge. Well, yeah, that's her. You know, that's I think that's almost part of the story for those kind of when you have like that big kind of long wrestling career. Surely. Yeah, I think if we're going to narrow it down, I think if we're being honest, it needs to be between Shayna Baszler and Rhea Ripley. In terms of where they are now to where they could be. So you're looking more at... Yeah, but I'd argue um, they'd be following the wake of Becky Lynch and what she's achieved. But that's what she's achieved. Yeah, but she's achieved that by changing the industry, which makes her the greatest wrestler of all time. But we're not talking about the greatest wrestler of all time. We're talking about the greatest wrestler in 10 years. Yeah. And she will be. The your, your argument's <laughs> falling apart, Phil. No, it's not. <laughs> it is. It's not. Because <laughs> they'll be looking back in 10 years' time thinking, wow, didn't Becky change the industry in such a manner that could give these women these careers? Because as, as I'll prove with this photo, photo um, this PowerPoint presentation, um, <laughs> like for a lot of the women who were probably as good as some of these wrestlers, they couldn't have that kind of career because it wasn't set up for them. There wasn't that kind of respect behind the division. But because of what Becky's achieved in the last year or so, it's proven that it can be done. So other women behind her can follow and, you know, uh, follow in that wake and have that kind of career. So you've okay. got to go with a person who broke that ground first for him. But here's Try the thing. hardest year. I've got to win one of these. I know you are. I know you are. But here, I'm going to, I'm going to just going to rip it to bits now. The reason why the Becky Lynch character became the Becky Lynch character she had was because of an accident in, the, in a match. Mm-hmm. It wasn't anything initially that she did herself. That broken nose she got from somebody laying it in hard was a blessing. Yeah. Was it Nia Jax? I, I think it was Nia Jax, yeah. It was Nia Jax. It wasn't even in a match. It was in a like, post It was in the show beatdown, wasn't role. it? Bullshit, Fiesta. But if you take that away, if that never happened, would Becky Lynch still be the one? I don't think so. But surely it's like being able to, when those opportunities come along, use them and uh, ride them as much as possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm not you know, saying... That's she, what separates she, she your that, Becky Lynch from somebody that, else. She wrote, she wrote that image well she's still writing it to date yeah. but I don't think that's going to be enough momentum to keep her going for 10 years well WrestleMania 13 kept Stone Cold going for a long time but that was a different era that's a different era of wrestling altogether was it that different was it you were... just, just give up Phil just no. concede so Phil come on sorry I'm going to make another point <laughs> when Stone Cold came they were desperate for that new star yep are they desperate for a new woman star at the minute maybe not now but there might be in a year or two's time thank you Al so one one other point. Whatever happened, like was it Asuka won the rumble? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, and, and that was a big deal. And then what's she doing now? She's in a tag team with Kylie. Saying she's the, 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 the tag team champion. Very, yes, yeah, they are. They're still doing very little. I mean, um, everyone thought she was going to be the big thing, and then she lost at WrestleMania. I don't think she's ever really recovered from that loss, has she? But they could turn it on tomorrow, and I think they'd be okay. Yeah. Well, 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 we'll see. Mm. I've well, got a one. suggestion, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Which I think it's quite a funny suggestion. Oh, dear. Somebody might have to write this down because my memory's not the best. Oh, God. I think we should do a follow-up to this podcast in exactly one year's time. Ooh. Next February. And we shall see where each woman we have delegated is positioned on the card and titles and how the career's planned out over the last year. So we defer the decision until <laughs> next year. <laughs> Well, I, no, no, I, we can say now. We can give our predictions now, and in a year's time, we can say who is the best prognosticator. That's some word. Prognosticator? Hmm. I'm glad he said that. Mm. Has Cameron uh, given an opinion during the entire debate so far? Th- I don't think so, no. Cameron, what are you thinking? No, I've. Um, Cameron Blair over there, political master. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> wow. I've been done by you before, Cameron, with your political games in the past. What? <laughs> What are you trying to suggest? <laughs> Whatever are you trying to suggest? I've literally got the bushwhackers that recorded that whole thing about. <laughs> and how do you know? How do you know, Phil, that you've not been worked already? <laughs> I don't know. That's the whole point. Usually, usually Phil has to hand over money when he gets worked over. <laughs> yeah, um, I think if what you and saying we're looking at potential over the next ten years, starting from 
you know, January 2020 to January 2030, then you've got to look more at either the Rhea Ripley or Sheena Baszler because they're the ones with the most potential yet to go. Yeah. And I think that's what we're basing our the episode on now is where can they go? Not where, I mean, I'm not just guaranteeing what um, Charlotte Flair or what Becky Lynch has done. They've done a massive amount of women's wrestling, but in 10 years' time, what could Shayna Baszler and Rhea Ripley do? They could do anything. Yeah. Can, because can that... Quote, I'm going to quote JR here. Oh, God. Uh, and then you've got to guess which wrestling you talk about afterwards. At least he's not quoting Jerry Lawler. Let's just be thankful for that. <laughs> That's a good point. This this guy has got unlimited potential, unlimited potential, but you've got to get the job done. Uh, big show at WrestleMania 17. <laughs> no, if I tell you it is potential, don't mean shit. It's test. That's what <laughs> oh, we said. That sake. is <laughs> test had unlimited potential. Well, we all know what happened. That's a fair point. That's so, a fair point. I just say potential's not always the best thing. Not always the best thing. It could be the new test. They could be. You're right. They could be. They'll get. They'll. They'll be called testicles. They'll have Stacey Keebler with them. They'll. You know, it'll all go. Yeah, the tag team's called on. TNA. Yeah. <laughs> God. So, I like Al's idea of coming back to this in a year's time. That's an interesting take. But I think we well, need to make a decision just now. That'll literally be the next episode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> We're just going to become like a podcast that just does this every February. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it once a year. The Women's Wrestling Podcast. The annual podcast. The Women's Wrestling Podcast by four white old men. It's going to be great. So are we literally deferring the decision until next year then? No, I think we should pick one now. and no, then pick one now. Then we can, oh, people are next just year. like... But next year we can then rip on the person who has choice of one. Well, if I can't mind, I'll probably go for Shayna. Oh. oh, there you go. See, Phil's now. <sighs> Cameron's working uh, with political th- machinations already. Now who's the yep. fucking politician? <laughs> <laughs> no, this thing, like, she's got more, uh, what's the word? Not more of an upside to her. That's probably not what I'm saying. I think, like, where she's positioned, she can be that kind of big top of the card kind of role that Ronda Rousey was in without having to go away and that, that kind of thing about not being a wrestler. I think she's, she, she'll fit, fit into that slot, which will like the kind of Brock slot of the, of the card, if that makes sense. But Big with, BC. with Ronda Rousey, though, Ronda Rousey came with a reputation already. She maybe has a reputation because of her MMA career, but nothing near to the same level no. as Ronda. I know, yeah, so I get that. a handicap. But she's just that kind of like beasty MMA person who can probably legitimately rip your arm off. But will that still be the demand thing in 10 years time I reckon so okay I'm not saying like you know Rhea, Rhea will be up I can see Rhea being like you know um, the kind of perennial feud that Shayna can kind of keep going back to because they've got great chemistry and it'll work but mm-hmm. I think Shayna will have probably just the slight edge of having the better the, the more kind of influence on wrestling as a whole I think Shane has got more of an edge because she's got the sort of background MMA stuff. She she has more of a legit fighter about her than Rhea Ripley does. And she's got really picked reason. up the wrestling game pretty quick, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. All right. Let's go with Shana then. Is that three for Shana? Three for Shana. Oh, you've convinced me. You've convinced me. Three for Shana and even... one for the Great Moolah. The Great Moolah. The Hungus Moolah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that when the Great Collie and Fabulous Moolah have a baby? Yes. Oh my the, God. The Great Moolah. And it's the other hand. <laughs> the Great, great Moolah was KJ Mitchell's cross dressing character that never got over. <laughs> oh God. Right. Well, there you go then. There we are. We're done. Shayna Baszler. What a debate that was. So we're going to come back to this in a year's time. Yeah. Yeah, when we, when we remember. All right, okay. Somebody write it down somewhere. <laughs> I'll take a note. Put it in the Slack. I thought we had a little diary thing going, so... Put it, yeah, put it on the calendar. I'll do, we'll do that. Cameron, your pick next. Yes. 
Oh, hell. Um, Affirmative burgering. Oh, right. yes. We were talking about this this afternoon. And, um, well, you and wanted to go. F- well, I've got two places we can go to next. One's good, one's bad. Let's go. I think I said, let's go bad. We've not done oh, a real yeah, bad before. You, you, you eventually said, Bill. Uh, uh, WF or a different organization? Well, bad WCW, good WF. WF, please, please. <laughs> Oh, I see. Al's put a vote in for good. You see, but right. Tell you what, why don't why don't I toss a virtual coin? Do I toss a virtual coin? Yes. Okay. So I like when I don't have to watch the thing in question. <laughs> so Al, I'm gonna gonna flip a coin. Heads or tails? Tails. It's fucking come up tails. <laughs> Woo-hoo, woo-hoo. Oh, man, I was I was certain it's gonna be like the the heel coin toss of the World of War games there. No, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be that. So does that mean we're going good? Yeah. <sighs> Who's the next pick after you, Cameron? Do you know? Me? I don't know. Oh God. <laughs> so what's the good then? We are. Actually, then, uh, what, what well, would we have had if it was bad? You yeah. would have had the bad was going to be WCW's last pay per view from oh, March 2001, which was greed. Wow. I'm just going to want to do that now. Um, right. Is that the Sid one? No. No, Sid. He, no that's, that's the one before it, yeah. yeah. This is. Um, this card. Right, Christ, that coin toss, I was lucky there. <laughs> Instead, because this January marked the uh, anniversary of the pay-per-view that got me back into wrestling after four years away. Um, it's the 2000 Royal Rumble. Ooh. So that's our next show. We get to review the swimsuit what? contest. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. great follow-up to this episode. From yes. <laughs> but we also get the street fight. Yes. <laughs> and we get the actual Rumble itself in 2000, which I remember being quite decent. One yeah, of my also- favourite Rumble surprises ever. We also get a ladder match. No, it's a tables match. It's a tables match. The table, the Dudley's Hard, Hardy's tables match. Yep. Yes, the, the road to TLC one. Yes. Wow, what a lot to look uh, forward to. How, Jeff, uh, Jeff does the send on off the um, entrance ramp. That's what it is. Yep. Glory and this be. was the this was the show that Channel Four realised they've made a terrible, terrible <laughs> mistake. <laughs> yes. Like, oh God! It was cancel the contract immediately. That is some contrasting shows there, Cameron. Well, I told you. I said you can either go good or bad. And is... are, are you, aren't you glad, guys? Aren't you glad? Yeah. Well, they, both, way, they, both, yes, wanted but... go, they both wanted to go bad. Oh, no one, nobody wants to sit through WCW sin. I wanted to wallow in the Don't filth. You... Hey, I, if to, I, I swear we're going to end up watching Heroes of Wrestling. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> well, I've actually seen quite a lot of it. And it's... Anyway. I don't know. <laughs> The greatest tag team of all time wrestle on the card. Yes, and that's one of the few. I don't know. They're not terrible. I think it got negative five stars. But <laughs> it did get minus five stars. Negative yes, five stars. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I've. I think there's only been a few matches that have achieved negative five stars. One match got negative seven one time. <laughs> I don't even want to comprehend that. <laughs> oh no, I'm really looking forward to Rumble 2000. It'll be good. Mm. Yeah. Well, there you go. Good podcast. <clears throat> I feel that Al has made the podcast dodge a bullet that Phil and you and will want to stand next to. Throw myself yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. I think it. I, I, having watched the first couple of matches of Greed, just out of curiosity, uh-huh. I do. I do remember thinking, I'm probably going to do this in about three or four chunks. <laughs> I'm just going to look at the card here. Two seconds. Let's have a look. At oh, the, the card's the card's not good. <laughs> Let's be honest. By the by, the end of it, things weren't great. It's like it's like Kiwi someone first. Oh God! Is Rackman on the card? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think Marvel are caught up with them, though. <laughs> yeah. Just I don't know if you know the answer. How how what's the gap in between this and the last night row? Eight days. So looking at the Wikipedia page like earlier, it's like. Oh, it's not the day after, is it? It's not the Sunday, or is it a week after? I think it's the week after. Yeah. And, like, it's funny, you look at this Wikipedia page for this pay-per-view on the, or Wikipedia, and the entire thing is about the last episode of Nitro. <laughs> it, 
<laughs> she mentions the card and then says, a week later was last episode of Nitro, and then goes through the whole details of the episode of Nitro. It's like, I don't think this is quite how Wikipedia yeah. is supposed to work, but hey, never mind. Oh, no. my Lord. You got you got Sean Stasek against Bam Bam Bigelow. There's no Bigelow <laughs> was still around at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he left beforehand. No. Anyway, good podcast, boys. Indeed. Oh, yes. Let's try and do another one this quarter. What, what, what do we say? <laughs> well, uh, well yeah. Sure. I think if, we're, if we've got the 2000 Royal Rumble to look forward to, then, yeah, it's, it's not going to be a bad one, is it? No. Nope. No. <laughs> Agreed. It all depends on what Al picks next. <laughs> Well, I'll give you a clue. It won't oh. be greed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a surprise. It's going to be sin. <laughs> <laughs> the best bit of sin is edited out on the network. Oh, is that the shin break? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Christ, is that, is that one with sin, is it? Oh. Yep. Yeah, the sins, the, the, I think the pay-per-view before, that's the one where someone decided, oh, Sid, we need you to do something different. Uh, how's about a top rope? Actually... Sin does contain a first blood chain match. What? <laughs> wow, what a combination of words. Yep, and also a penalty box match <laughs> with Jim Duggan as special guest referee. Right, we're doing that next week now. <laughs> Come on. Come on. No, no. One day we'll do a good WCW Calm podcast. Calm yourself down, Phil. <laughs> um, there's plenty of good WCW we could do. Have we not done 92 war games? I think we did. I think we did. That's probably the highest on the list, I think. I think it probably. is. <laughs> anyway, anyway. anyway. I wanted to do something decent. It was either going to be the 2000 Royal Rumble or WrestleMania 17. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I think we should save 17 for a bit into the juice. I think, I think we need to save it for a few more. Into the juice? Is that the latest <laughs> film you've bought? What kind of phrase is that? <laughs> I don't quite know where I'm filming that. I'm ending it. I'm ending it now. I like that. Episode. I'm ending it on Into Al, the think, Juice. Al, I think that should be your autobiography. <laughs> Alan Milburn, Into the Juice. No, it's um, All Night Long, isn't it? That's, his, that's the title of it. Oh, all Night Long. <laughs> yeah, <that's> <laughs> <laughs> all Night Long, all night. All Night Long, all night. <laughs> God. All night, night long. All night. <laughs> well, I've got to go and iron my shirts now. Oh, my life. <laughs> life, right, life yeah. All right, then, Al. Good night, Al. Bye. Night, night. They didn't want to play. No, I need practice in. Apparently, there's a big tournament at Gretna tomorrow, um, Friday night. Is it? Yeah, I don't think I'm good. It'll be too good for me. But uh, yeah, apparently, some of the guys want to go down on the train to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure where. Uh, you haven't got that many venues. Where would the darts thing be in Gretna, Cameron? Uh, in a pub. Like a big, it'll have to be a big one, a biggish venue. I would say the Gretna Inn. Could be. <laughs> I like that the port. biggest pub in Gretna is literally called the Gretna Inn. Inn. <laughs> it used to be called the Crossways. Okay, okay. And it got bought and then someone called it the Gretna Inn. I don't live in Gretna anymore. I don't decide these things. <laughs> is that, one, All right, is that the one across from the um, shopping centre, no? Yeah, that is, yeah. On the roundabout, I know. Yeah, it's on the roundabout. God, if he's getting the train, then it'll be a fair distance from the walk. Not really, it's like five minutes. Oh, well, it looks a fair distance anyway, right? So, if you're in the area, folks, and fancy a thrilling Friday night out, come on down to the darts. <laughs> come on down. <laughs> come on down to the darts in Gretna. Anyway. Get stabbed we were... in the process. No, it's indoor balls is the thing the kids like these days. It's all over Twitter, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much.